Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, and I'm hanging out with the crew today. We have uh, Nate the Nerdark in the house, and Nerdark is Ted, as well as the newly appointed and dubbed Nerdator, Doug. Nerdator in chief. Nerdator in chief. Of oh, sorry, <laughs> I thought it was chef. Nerdator in chef. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so today we're just hanging out, taking your questions. And uh, just talking about D and D and nerdy stuff. So apparently, uh, we're. I was just looking at a thing that says Matt Mercer is running a D and D Twitch thing. I was just telling these guys about it in New York on the 18th, which is really close to us. Except for we're supposed to be at PAX Unplugged that day. So that would be that would be tricky. That would uh yeah. I'm changed. We we'll have to see. I have to look at the uh, when he's actually supposed to be running this thing. So what's up, people? Any guys going to be hitting PAX Unplugged this year? It's the first one. You only get to go to the first one once. Indeed, and you know, like, you know, let let us know. You know, we're going to be at the Open Legend booth, so you'll be able to come hang out with us, talk some nerdy stuff. Oh, we got some brick New Jersey in the house, man. You're not too far from us. I used to do. I actually have done a lot of work uh, in brick when I was doing highway work. <laughs> they're they're impromptuing doing a uh roll call sort of <laughs> all that it takes is one person <laughs> so we have a jacob stokes who says this thumbnail is both immaculate and inspiring <laughs> i like it i i agree it's a beautiful thing i, I said remember. in live chat i should have put like nerdarchist ted challenges you or something <laughs> <laughs> am i challenging somebody to something he ted's like well, thumbnail what thumbnail <laughs> He's got a sword in the face, so I, automatically anybody with a sword is welcome to challenge Ted to a duel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that yeah, as long like, as you're not, you know. Go ahead, Dave. As it looks like a very challenging pose. It's just like he's beckoning you guys to come at him. Come at me, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's up, people? Did anybody play any games this weekend? This weekend was uh, quiet for me. Well, I had the the game Friday night, uh, which okay. you know had all kinds of technical difficulties. And <laughs> Ted broke the interwebs. And I had. Yeah, I, think the, the I think the interwebs broke me. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting ending to that. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I would say so. Uh, was not was <laughs> did not go as originally planned. Does it ever though? <laughs> Uncle Peter, <laughs> evil Ted is medieval. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing you're using the, you know, me with my sword in front of the Nerdarchy banner. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you guessed it. <laughs> and uh, as opposed to being able to get stuff done, I went to a, uh, a kid's birthday party yesterday and got roped into running yet another game this month. <laughs> For kids? Uh, one adult and three kids. Oh, that's cool. So you're getting stuff done. Yeah. Making connections, family stuff. So my, my son will actually get his first D and D experience on Thursday. Oh, that's awesome. Score. And I played my uh third game, third episode of The Hold of the Mora Danes, which is my pay to play game. It's going really well. The guys are liking it. So I played that this Saturday. How did that go? Oh good, except I went over <laughs> to eleven, like I always do. I always seem to go over. And um You over delivered. Well, it started, I, I accidentally deleted part of the second episode. So it started with us being like, well, sorry, guys, but I lost some of our stuff. And it was nice, like an hour worth of RP things. So we just kind of like just went through it really quick for 10 minutes and kind of attached that to the, the second episode instead. So it chopped it up a little bit. But so I started bummed out, but the players are fine. <laughs> uh, sorry, 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 Mormon dude. His Pathfinder got game got canceled yesterday. Uh, Jason Jacob Stotes, do do you have uh, do you have a, uh, do have I do have a question. You guys have videos on it. How do you all prefer to start bands or even just sessions, first sessions? Do we do any videos on that? I'm probably <laughs> maybe I have multiple ones. <laughs> we need Mike Gould to tell us. He's like seventeen times you've done that video. Yeah, we, like, we like to start off with a session zero. <laughs> Not always. Not, we didn't always do that, but yeah, nowadays we do try and get session zero in. Well, that's how I prefer. Okay, he says prefer to start, and I actually prefer to start a campaign with a session zero. 
Yeah. If it's, just a, if it's just a one shot, I like to know what characters are actually going to be playing in it so I can kind of customize it a little bit. Do you have any preferred ways that you actually start the game, though? Like, oh, thing, starting like, or in a tavern? Or... Okay. So, assuming session zero is started, I mean, well, there's the classic tavern. But normally, I, I would start it off with something that's going to be linked to the like main story arc that I'm going to run for at least the next five okay. or six sessions. I want to at least put something out there. They might not know anything, how it's connected, but I start with putting something out there that's relevant. And then I might fill it up with like, oh, you want to go to the blacksmith shop and any little tiny things they want to explore the area with and then kind of draw them back. If it's like a long enough session, I'd like to draw them back towards the concept by having another encounter that's kind of linked to the, the main arc. Explosions. Well, we, all games should start with explosions. I like the. I like we, that. We did a uh, a video that we recorded this weekend, so it should be going up sometime this week, where we did a video talking about the consequences of not doing a session zero. Huh. I wonder. I can't even check. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder if that video is going up this week. <laughs> we definitely had some videos that we had to get out this week, so I don't know if that one made the cut or not, or forgot pushed to next week. Although the chances are pretty good that it did get go out this week because the bank is low. Right. <laughs> well, we had a couple issues with some of the videos that we had recorded previously. Two of them just can't use. So uh, the the bank of six, I think, is down to a bank of four. Yeah, something like that. Um, <laughs> three. That it, um, it's all it's all the part it's all the part of the life of being a YouTuber. And then, you know, with us having... Nate W throws panties. <laughs> Bob, uh, he's, 20 do. He's the, he's the Tom Jones of YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, throw, we throw our panties at, at uh, Nate all the time, so... It's well, bad. Bob, 2-0-0, I, I appreciate your feelings, but I can't reciprocate with my own panties, so... <laughs> the wear them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I just got the the mental image of Nate's underwear flying through the air. I need to. That's, just, that's, right. <laughs> that's in your. I was brain just now. thinking, man, that's a lot of underwear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is happening to this chat? I mean, like, <laughs> why did someone just throw a tablecloth? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Dude. Hey, my butt is not that that's big. <laughs> Nate's a big dude. Now he's throwing. He's throwing shade now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's getting so. I better well, turn off the lights to show how appropriate it is. Uh, well, we do. We do have the the unit of measure in FPN. So. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fetal position, Nate's. Yeah, that that is true. So, guys, it's if you got any questions that. you want to ask about us personally, about um, gaming, about YouTube, I know some people have messaged us about you you doing the YouTube stuff as well. We can field some of those. Uh, also, um, our Zanthor guide to everything flip through is out. I know some of you guys have already commented on it, and also the entry for the for the contest is over there as well. So in the description, so you can check that out. And it's we don't talk very much in that video. It's more just showing the cool artwork and you know whatever whatever, whatever you can glimpse. I just I'm just picturing people like pausing and trying to read. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Ooh, what do these spells do? There was yeah. a question from Ed Does Everything. He says, how long of sessions do y'all like running? It depends. I'll go, I'll go first and I'll kick it to you guys. So if I am running an online session, I like two hours. If we're playing in person, uh, you know, it's as long as everyone's still into it and going. So I think our in-person sessions nowadays range from three to five hours. Sometimes I interpreted six. that question differently. I think... I, I thought you were talking about how long does the campaign go? Uh, yeah, so, that's yeah. That's well, how I this, man. <laughs> but then when Doug read it, I said, oh, yeah, hours, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> online, online, two to three hours. And after that, I, I you know, it's like, right, I want to I wanna get up, I want to stretch, I want to move. I, I don't want to be confined to the chair for longer than that. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm actually playing the, the game in-house with a bunch of people, you know, four to six hours, I think, is a is a pretty good stay because you know you can easily do bathroom breaks, you can have food breaks. Uh, you know, you get far more socialization involved 
because uh, you know some of these people you might see, but you know once a month, or you know, if you're gaming every week, then you might only see them once a week and not talk thereafter. So you're always, you know, you, you feel a closer connection to the people that are that are local, and there's going to be that camaraderie and and sharing and like, all right, let's let's find out what's going on in your life before you actually get down to you know the serious business of role playing and chucking dice. How about you, Doug? Uh, same, like online, like two, three hours is, is good for me. But yeah, in person, it's probably closer to like four to six hours. That's what my group usually does. But, but like Ted said, it's like they're socializing and you don't know, see these people all the time. So it's probably four hours of actual gaming going on. <laughs> because if they're, on, if they're on the internet, they're not real people. So you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> They're just, when just I hit when images. I close the camera, you don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so f- for me, I would say. Family, so. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. you do exist. No, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so for me, if it's if it's live, I want to do like a max of three hours, and I but it, it ends up going three and a half for me. Uh, but if it's if it's four offline, and a half, four and a half. <laughs> if it's offline and record it, I'm totally cool with doing longer because we can just take you can just take breaks. I mean, I'm sorry. If it's over the internet, but it is recorded, like my my Hold the More Dame campaign that I'm doing, I really like it because we can just say, all right, I'm stopping this section. It's going to be its own file. And then let's take a five-minute like food, snack, whatever break, come back and do another segment. And we might do two or three segments based on, you know, how long the how long it's going and when the breaks, you know, when it's appropriate to take breaks. So I can go for three to five hours based on, you know, how that gets broken up. But for, I don't know, we used to play for a stupid long time, like eight hours sometimes when oh, we yeah. were in person. <laughs> we, we've done like 12 hour sessions. Yeah. No, I just, when you're a kid, remember, you don't have anything else to do. I feel like I remember ordering food <laughs> twice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's when you know it's long, when you got to order multiple pizzas and stuff over, over a series of time. Well, Actually, Doug, we were legally adults. Uh, some of us <laughs> may or may not have been married owning their own homes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, still, Saturday game was important. So mm-hmm. Play until 3 o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock in the morning. But the sun comes up, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we, not, not recently. <laughs> now that I think about it, we would get together, what, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon? And then... Uh, you know, there there's definitely been times that we played till like sun up, like six in the morning. And that, that was that a long time ago, but yeah, that worked for me when we were, when I was eighteen and nineteen. And I yeah, think not so much now. Sleep. Now we're all freaking old and falling apart. <laughs> well, you know, play styles have changed too in a bit. Like you know, years and years ago, it's like people would do like dungeon crawls, where it's like you're just going ten feet at a time, searching for traps, and the gameplay took a lot longer. Today, it's like a lot faster just the way people play so that might have something to do with it like if you played for eight hours now you'd probably get a lot more done than than if you're just like crawling through you know under mountain or whatever well i also think that you know beyond the the system evolving we ourselves evolved as players so like we we can do better role playing and seek out more role playing whereas like back in the day there was probably significantly more combat in our sessions so it's like okay well you know if you're gonna go do a dungeon you might have a session that's you know eight to 15 encounters or battles where now our typical things like if we have four four combats in a night it's like dude what the hell you know that's a lot <laughs> so it, it's it's a just a very different play style than what we used to do Absolutely. <laughs> Uncle Peter wants to know, are you growing a Nerdarchy beard, Doug? I've had a beard, man. Well, you, did you ever go to you one point? Oh, yeah. I've been clean. I'm, I'm a shapeshifter, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That I didn't think about it. And you're like, yeah, I so. He doesn't take long to grow an epic full beard there. No, it doesn't take long. I think the last time I had a beard, I went to trim it, and I had the wrong setting. So I was like, <laughs> like nope, that's not going to work. <laughs> The Jinger yeah. GM says it's not a beard, it's a sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually I've actually taken I don't actually trim my beard anymore. I go to the barber and let them do it. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Then if it then if it gets messed up, I got someone to scream at. <laughs> yeah. And lots of shit at hand. 
you're breaking stuff, throwing stuff. I can't believe you messed my beard. You know how long it took to get this epic. Go to flip over the chair, realize it's folded it down. I just look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Pull out your back. <laughs> Uh, not, uh, not the last time. Time before that, he nicked my ear and knocked like five bucks off. I was like, oh, I got to remember to move. <laughs> <laughs> Save five bucks. <laughs> it's a little scar tissue amongst friends. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Kyle S is in the chat. I did notice. Yeah, I saw that. He's back. He's alive. Hey, Kyle. I wonder if, I wonder if this is early for him or if it's a day off because of um, – <laughs> Jinker G, I'm sorry I got distracted by the chat. Dave freaking out at Supercuts would be sick. <laughs> be a good viral YouTube video. Yeah, yeah that, we have that videos of us like freaking out at different places. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so I was wondering if uh, how, how's the job going, Kyle? Has your, has your soul been thoroughly crushed yet? That second shift and third shift sucks. I think Doug knows a little bit about that. Yeah, but I work at home, so I can I can do nerdy stuff while, while I'm working. Unless any of my coworkers are watching right now, then I'm totally focused on my job. Focus don't work the whole time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but so he says he has work at one a.m. You tell him if that's early. Oh. Oh, that's like, like a I've been time. there. I've I've been there. I despise it. I did it for two months, and it was probably the worst two months of my life. 1 a.m. is a really weird time to go in. Yeah. I think you roofing know, was the worst job I ever had. Uh, roofing sucked. What was it? Yeah. I did roofing for a week. I didn't think it was that bad. But you only did uh, it for must a not week. I did it for a week, too, and then I was like, F this. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think I had a choice. I was taking you know whatever kind of work I could get. Yep. Um, I mean, it was... It was July, August heat. So, I mean, there was, it was, it wasn't like it was like, oh, you know, I'm sitting pretty and, you know, it's the nice spring weather. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was grueling work, but I mean, I was, I was learning something and, you know, I was, I don't know. I didn't think it was that bad. It's, now, maybe the question. second, third, fourth, fifth week, fifth week might be, you know, <laughs> yeah. worse. I, I don't know. Here's a so, question. So, uh, Carl Maxim wants to know. What our favorite archetypes are in Zalantar's guide. Shadow Sorcerer. I've uh, I've only really read the Barbarians, to be honest with you. I've read the Barbarians. <laughs> and I read the War Wizard so far. I, I truth be told, I have I, sk I skipped over the classes for now. I was reading the other stuff. I have oh. not read anything beyond like oh, Path of the Ancestral Guardian. That sounds cool. Well, I'll read that one. So it kind of makes sense, though, if you think about it, because you're more likely to DM and run and use the material for the DMs than you are to use the stuff for the players, because if you're, if you're already in a game, uh -huh. you're, you already have, you know, you're, you already have your character, so you're, it's, you're, you're not likely to be using the new stuff. Yeah, and I've already, I've already got slated the next, like, long-term character, you know, that I'm going to play in, in 5e. So, like, I, I don't even need to be thinking about, you know, what's next. And I don't have any one shots that, you know, I'm preparing for. They'd be like, oh, let me try this or let me try that. But I am looking at, okay, well, I'm looking to run seven to nine sessions this month. So, yeah, I clearly DM more. That actually makes me have a question for you guys. So, like, I know your, your long-term campaigns are nearing the end. Are you going to jump right into another thing? Do you have anything planned or any differences in how you're going to run them? It's, I mean, it's 30 days, like, right when 5e was pretty new. So It's going to be months before I'm finished. So I think my guys, did you guys just get 15th? Yeah, we just got 15th level. So, so like, I look at that as I've got another year left on this game. I was going to probably have another year. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think planning out the next thing I need to start yet. I mean, and I didn't even plan this as the, you know, oh, well, this is going to be a five-year campaign. Yeah. I just was like, oh, okay. Like, okay. Yeah, we need someone to run something. <laughs> yes, like, yes, Kyle, the, the damned unicorn has been found. Yeah. And, you know, if everything goes according to plan, it will die Saturday. Bum, bum. <laughs> yeah. dun, dun, dun. So let's see. As, yeah, how about you, Dave, for starting for uh... – campaigning 
Yeah, well, it's like Ted said, like it's that that game. Like I, I guess I level you guys every two levels or so. So that's you know five six levels. That's ten months. You know, so it's going to be a while. So I haven't thought about it yet. You know. <coughs> Right. I don't know if we're gonna, you know, run games with the same players. If we're gonna put that put together new groups for the for new games and what we're gonna do, you know, may, like I think a new game would be a good great time to experiment with with different camera camera angles and multiple cameras and stuff like that. Like uh, if we could if we could run OBS or something, and we could do. Uh, we could we could definitely do something with that maybe maybe even ha or even if we did just different angles where we had a switcher or like kind of like uh, they did with Think Geek and had someone switch camera angles back and forth that that would be cool or we'll do the boxes one or the other <laughs> so who knows who knows what we'll do for the next one <laughs> so wait you're talking about for our in person game having kind of uh, multiple cameras. Yeah, yeah. You can use, you know, we could use a program like OBS. Webcams are fairly cheap, so we could, do, you know, we could use a couple of those. Uh, we did, we we did experiment with, um, you know, using our our camera we're shooting our videos with now for for filming games. Going to see how that works out because one of the things I noticed about the games that we did do with that is the files seem really small in comparison to the other files we run now i don't know if it's because the video gets compressed by running it through that program now i'm probably boring the fuck out of everybody <laughs> yeah dave that sounds pretty interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah read these stereo, stereo instructions <laughs> let's talk about the rules of baseball or something <laughs> yeah so but yeah we're i think like i said i think that's a great time for us to experiment with some new things as far as Filming and making the games a little more interesting for you guys to watch. That's that. That's the direction I would like to move into with it for sure. So has your gaming and play styles changed just since you started Nerd Anarchy? Yes, you know, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, not not only do you know we continue to you know play and learn you know, but as you meet more and more players and GMs, you're always going to find things that you like from their style and say, oh, well, how can I incorporate that? Or if you learn new systems, it's like, oh, how can I incorporate that? So if you are, if you are serious about RPGs, as you know, we, we clearly are, then it's a constant growing evolution process. And as you hear things, as you see things, as you do things, you take all the feedback, you take all the constructive criticism, and you say, all right, how can I evolve and move forward? How can I become better? And also, too, like, we're getting, we're becoming friends with and get exposed with a lot of people that play the game at a higher level. So just by proximity, I feel like it causes you to up your craft and get better at what you're doing so th that's definitely a factor and you know like i like we've said all along we really kind of ignored the internet when it came to gaming and before we started nerdarchy so you know all of our gaming had been contained in this bubble and once we started nerdarchy that like, that bubble burst or and, you know expanded and encompassed the world basically so we we got exposed to a lot of ideas and concepts that we weren't familiar with or reintroduce the concepts that we were familiar with, but maybe we called them something different or used them in different ways. So it's definitely been a, a you know a growing phase for all of us. Shoundar breaking our balls. Nerdarchy doesn't care about class. <laughs> we are classless. <laughs> I added the last part. <laughs> oh, we, we 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 care. It's just at the at the moment, it's just not as important to us. You know, mo most of those things, if not all of them, are. You know, re revisions of the stuff that we talked about on the Unearthed Arcana, whereas some of the other stuff that's in the DMs tools and other stuff are things that this is our first exposure to it. So naturally, I don't know about the other guys, but naturally I'm more interested in the stuff that I haven't seen before rather than like, oh, well, how did they revise this class or how did they revise that archetype? 
Yeah, like for me, like the first thing I went to was the War Wizard because I'm playing one. So I wanted to see. I'm like, oh, I got a little. It's not quite as good as it was in No North Arcana. Yeah, so it's like sad face. Um, <laughs> in some ways, and then in other ways, like they changed it up and, and made it. Uh, it so the one ability they kind of like nerfed it but you're going to get to use it a lot more in theory if you play the war wizard the way i guess they think you should be which is dispelling magic and counterspelling spells which i agree is you know a great thing to to be able to do especially you know if you can have one especially the gish wizard that's not quite as good as the other wizard just kind of hanging out and shutting down enemy spellcasters so the war wizard is geared towards literal like war. It sounds like yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like you'd be facing off against the other army's war wizard, basically. Yeah, like one of their abil- like one of their abilities that's kind of cool is they get like a lesser shield. Okay. So as a reaction, they can it'll it'll keep them from casting any spells the next turn, but they can cast cantrips. Um, but it gives them a plus two to armor class or and a plus two to their saving throws. Hmm. So, is that that's going to stack with the plus two concentration one, or? Uh, I would think so. Yeah, as long as you're concentrating. I mean, as long as the all the rules are in place. So you know, maybe. I just realized Nate has the classic banner behind him. Woo! He does. Yeah, he's he's running old school. Yep. You have Jinkers asked, "What do we prefer? Uh, what what do you guys use, FG or Roll Twenty? I use Fantasy Grounds with uh with the Saber Dice game. <laughs> And Doug Davison, who runs Fantasy Grounds over there, is a super cool dude. You also have the Fantasy Ground College over there with uh, tons of resources. And literally, like, I was trying to figure something out on Fantasy Grounds. And I just wanted to pop in there and say, hey, can I? is there a place where I can just look at this? And literally, next thing you know, I'm, I'm on a Discord chat with one of the <clears throat> with one of the people that run the classes over there. And I wasn't even trying to be. And but they're like they're they're like super helpful, and pretty much at any given time you can go over there, and someone will give you a hand with whatever it is. They'll walk you through it. They'll basically do it, you know, a one-on-one tutorial for you if that's what if, if that's what they need. So I found that super super helpful and super useful. I'm a fan of Fantasy Grounds. Mr. Reb's cleaning service has an ironic question. Since has a cleaning service, how do you get work blood out of your beard? Hmm. You know, I, I, while I appreciate that question at the same time, I'm kind of like, man, I might not want to use that cleaning service. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you should know that. Right. You when tell us. Clean, keep, cleaning service. That's like I a bathhouse. I think service. you have to cut it with something. <laughs> Some kind of alcohol. That's a bathhouse service. <laughs> Getting work blood out of your beard. <laughs> uh, I'm incorrect. It's a plus two bonus to AC against attacks, or a plus four bonus to saving throw. Ooh, plus four. That's nice. Yeah. So you know, if you're close on that saving throw, that is a nice use of it. <laughs> it's not good. as good as the shield spell, but you don't have to use the spell slot to do it. Is that times per day, or can just whenever? Oh, you can the do it whenever. The the you're restriction just... is the following that for the you know until the I guess until the end of your next turn, you can't cast any spells by cantrips. Okay. So, so it's sac- basically like sacrificing next turn spell casting ability for protection this turn. Yeah, but I mean you still have your action. You can do everything but cast a full, you know, uh, a spell one through ninth level. And then, you know, they you know, like under under all the classes, they got these cool cool sections where like I'm looking at the wizard right now, it's you know, spell books and has different spell books. Ambition, there's different things for that. Uh and Eccentricity. So they do. A, there's a lot of like fluff stuff in there for for each of the classes. I believe that one lazy guy had a question. Uh, he wants to know if we would consider doing a playlist for mutants and masterminds, how to make characters, how to play, how to GM, so on and so forth. We considered it. I think the biggest thing with that is because we haven't played it in a while, we would want to brush up before delving into that. You know, uh, me and Ted are definitely big fans of. Yeah, the the, the trick with the trick with mutants and masterminds is really the fact that you have to, as the as the GM, you you really have to do like a session zero and, and tell people the 
the kind of game that you're going to run, whether you're trying to run a superheroes games, a street level game, uh, you know, a, a you know a fantasy or you know like kind of hero game. It's ve- you know it's very different because there's certain powers that you have within that game that if you take that, it it totally breaks the mechanics of of what you're trying to run like. It, it, because you're dealing with a game that is designed primarily as a supers game, it's like, oh well, I've got this power. You know, say so like flight. So many, so many people will complain about flying as a as a problem for players to have 100 percent access to it right in the beginning of the game. Well, that that can that can be an issue. Or if you go with super speed, it it breaks. The course of the game of like, oh well, we need to get a message over there. All right, I'll I'll do it. I'm back. <laughs> like that 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 breaks a fantasy game. Le- if, yeah, literally, your super speedster would take longer. It would take him longer to tell you that I'll do it than to go over there and do it if you like max out that power. Yeah. Uh, but that you know, again, that's that's the trope. That's the kind of games. You know, tactical combat, useless. <laughs> Yeah, because you have you have so much more space that you can you can do stuff, and if you're incorporating things that that fly, I mean, you you have that in in typical D and D as well, but it's not necessarily as often. You know, if you have buildings that you have to worry about, are you going to build buildings at high rises that you're going to put on your on your mat? That 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 takes a lot of time to to get into, so it's far more theater of the mind in that style of game. Yeah, I think you have to have kind of like speed limits on games like that. Like, okay, you can fly this fast, you can run this fast, you can teleport this far, and everything else is fair game, kind of like. It's kind of built into the rules, though. It's like, what kind of game are you playing? Yeah. Like, the power level caps it. Uh, So we got some other questions going on in here. You know, if they're not playing or not familiar with the system. It's a good game. Check it out. So, Jacob Stokes, how often do you guys find you run into scheduling issues and have to cancel planned meetings? We run into schedule issues pretty much every month. And I think the rule of thumb is when I was running the larger table, it's like if I can get like four people to the table, three people to the table, we just play anyway. Yeah, as long as you can get a a big enough chunk of the players – you modify what you have prepared and you go, or you don't prepare until you know how many people are actually going to be there. Side quest time. Um, well, because otherwise what happens is you just keep postponing and you never play. Like if, you know, if ev- everyone has to be there, look, your story is not a novel. You know, it's not going to be an epic movie. No one really gives a fuck. You know, just get together and throw some funny shaped dice and have fr- fun with your friends. You, you know, it's sure, you know, it would have been better if everyone was there and plot continuity was maintained, but sometimes you just got to say, screw it, and, and and throw some funny shaped dice with your friends and make it happen. Yeah, I started doing that after having scheduling problems ourselves, and then, you know, we were like, oh, well, you know, we ended, and this guy couldn't make it, so we we'll, you know, want to play that now. We're just like, whatever, we'll just hand wave. It's like, you were there, or you're there now. I remember. Well, we- back, back in. Go ahead, Dave. I remember when we had gotten a comment on a video and someone was like, me and my friends create effing art. And I got my like, oh my God, if my eyes rolled any harder when I read that comment, they're like, like, <laughs> going out of my head. <laughs> like, come on, man. It's a freaking game. Well, back in the day, I mean, we, we would have, you know, sometimes severe penalties on, you know, player characters. You know, if you didn't wind up showing up, you know, you weren't getting a share of the treasure, you weren't getting XP, and, and it, it created more work on the DM to come up with, well, where is your character? How are we doing? And then we always were running games where there was no home base. You constantly traveled and no one wanted to run someone else's character for them. It was just too much work. So we've had all kinds of horrific stories, including the, well, this dude didn't show up. So the DM hung his character. Like we, we woke up you know, from, you know, setting camp and the dude's character was 
was dead, hanging from a tree. Ooh. Like, that's harsh. <laughs> yeah. You know, now, nowadays, like, there's times where a character doesn't show up, and you know, I don't even, I don't even give a reason, like, that they're not there. Like, sometimes players will come up with, "Oh, well, this is what my character is doing," or other characters at the table will be like, "Oh, hey." Not here. Can you go deliver this message to so and so? It's it's urgent. The best um, one, the best one was in my game. Like I I do usually try and come up with something, but uh, the best one in my game was when uh, Anthony's character was there and Nicole's character, Nicole or ne Anthony was there and Nicole couldn't make it. She had another engagement, so she so Anthony's like, yeah, uh, N Nicole's character just rises, rides, gets high. Jumps on on um, Rip Nugget, her giant spider mount, and uh, rides away screaming, "I'm covered in spiders." <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of my favorites. Uh, you know, have fun with it. So of course, yeah. you also get a win. Got me kidnapped as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I do that often. Like there, if you do not show up to my game, there's a good chance that your character will get kidnapped. <laughs> Most likely, but for the most part, I don't really do anything bad to the characters. Hey, that's actually still the best. You know, the reward I got for not being there is still the greatest thing to happen to to Relion, So, well, it was a fun like plot thing, story thing, and I thought you would dig it. So, and I think I asked you if it was okay. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting the re the reward that I got. Like you know, for the fat guy that likes to eat and read, getting an extra four hours to to do so every day. He digs it. <laughs> Underwood sketches. Hey, how many of you guys started start off DMing because nobody else wanted to? Because I'm kind of a bad because I'm kind of bad at speaking, but it happened to me. I you know, I think that's how I started DMing is because I just really wanted to play and there was no DMs. So I mean, I was lucky enough that have some couple people have a couple of people that had run uh, games for me before and been really good. But that being said, uh, when we we first started gaming as a group and it was uh it was ted and nate nate and there was this guy steve we mentioned from time to time and ryan i think that was like the core of the group that we started at that point i had very little experience dming but you know you and steve ran you know re repeatedly down and said enough of this you know shite one of you guys is gonna gonna run i want to play and you you kind of like made us take a turn at the table and you know here we are you know 15 years later dude poison's back hey yeah, I just mentioned him the other day yeah yeah, it yeah i was poison in a while he cried a little bit yeah so i think that's pretty common that you know so there's there's always like that guy that starts or that girl that starts because they want to really play and no one else is willing to run the game because unfortunately there is always way more, way more players than there are GMs. Well, you know, by that same token, people that nowadays say like, I want to play, but I can't find anybody running games. Just run it. Just get some friends and say, Hey, I'm going to run D and D come on over and we'll play. It's not that hard. Yeah, yeah, grow, grow a pair, grab some funny shaped dice, yeah. and run it. I mean, yeah, even well, the experienced people get intimidated. Like, Oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. It's like, it's just a game with your friends, man. Like just, play and see what happens you'll get better you're gonna suck at times telephone <laughs> <laughs> so uh we got tons of questions ranger roy have you guys considered playing adventures in middle earth i want to say we i want to say i haven't um Oh, thanks, Doug. Yeah, and let's jump in the roll call as we start talking about Middle Earth. Now, now me, now me and Ted did a pretty extensive review of the Middle Earth Player's Guide, and it's decent, and I like it. But it, at the end of the day, we just like playing our homebrew stuff. We like the cherry pick stuff. We might steal stuff from those books, but I just can't see us actually running it. And they also focus on area the areas of the game that are a little different too, like. Like the actual like journey, the travel, like as a whole like game within the game, it seems it's interesting and weird at the same time. So the ranger kicks ass. No, well, yes and no, but like there's die rolls and stuff. Oh really? Well, yeah, we gotta explore. But it's just it's a whole journey section. And the thing is, like, for the journey section, everyone has to have jobs 
And like, if you kind of don't have certain people doing certain jobs, you're kind of boned. So your journey is going to be bad. And then there's going to be bad things that happen. <laughs> you're going to have a bogus journey. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds kind of funny, though, to be honest. Yeah, there's some interesting aspects. It's the journey, not the destination, man. But in a way, like the way it's written, it's like the journey kind of happens. Like the, my take of it was like the journey kind of happens. Yeah. You make some die rolls and determine like how it went. Oh, oh, you don't. Okay, I see. What you're yeah, actually, what was that? The early on Earth, can it right? No, no, it was in Middle Earth. Yeah, well, I mean, wasn't it a? Thing, though? No, no, no. It's a, it's actual product from oh. Cubicle 7, maybe? Oh, I didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah. It's on the um, cuff. Yeah, there, Ted's got it. <laughs> I, like I want to say Cubicle setting. 7 is accurate. I like the setting of Middle Earth, but I don't. I would probably just run it in 5e. So. That is 5, it is 5e, but it's like an adaptation. Mm. So like magic is less magicy. Yeah, I'm you not, have I'm to. Not too keen on magic is less magicy. <laughs> well, then, it's like then magic, you, but not magic. Then you can't really do Middle Earth. I mean, that's the that's yeah. the thing. Like, I mean, true. Gandalf was literally busting out like a pyrotechnic spell. <laughs> he was a fighter with a with the magic initiate feat. <laughs> that might be accurate. And, and a whole bunch of knowledge skills. Speaking of games and different systems. Um, I, there's so many other games that uh, like I play. I have no idea how to play. We're playing that. We play that Star Trek Adventures every other week. I have it, like, and they'll start talking about the rules and stuff. And you know, while we're playing live, like I don't know. I just am like, yeah, I want to do this. Just tell me what the rule. I have no clue. Same with Marvel Phaser, but I don't know how that game works. I just play with you guys. Uh, Which is oh, so. Uh, Shander's saying how old he is. He's 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 out in himself. He's a little bit older than the rest of us. Who? Let's, oh, Elfie. I've been DMing since 78. Wow. I was three. I've been, li <laughs> I've been living since 78. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not, you were born in 78. Uh, no, you were born in, no, you're only a couple years. What year were you born? Ted? Me? 78. Oh, you were born? Yeah. So depending when in 78. <laughs> maybe the, maybe the one. But you know, we, we had a meeting for Saver and Dice here, and, the... and, that, and that can kind of came up. I'm like, you know, Cody, I think I've been DMing for as long as you've been alive, or playing the game for as long as you've been alive, and then you know, longer than Will's been alive because he's in, he's like 21. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I've cool. I've definitely been gaming longer than that. It's it's been a while. Oh yeah, I guess we started a roll call a while back. <laughs> I completely forgot about it. We got friggin' Ader in Washington. Niagara Falls in the house with Rich. Ranger Roy is in Missouri. We got Regilio in Utah. Lopez Island, Washington. AJ Kenny. Geek and Undies is in Circleville, Ohio. Kyle is in Jersey. Santa Barbara, California with Sean. Alfie is in Edmonds, Washington. Poison back in Kuwait. Uh, we have uh, Shalador is in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Monroe, Louisiana, in the house with Jacob Stokes. We got Greenland in Tampa, Florida. We got Runehammer, the Great Cascades. I'm not sure where that is. Uh, Pittsburgh is in the house with Paul. Sue Rainey's joining us from Atlanta today. We got Lincoln in Sweden. We've got Ontario in the house with Uncle Peter. We got Patrick in Sweden. We got Back in Thay with Jinker GM. We've got. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> People are trying to teach me how to pronounce things. They're so silly. <laughs> uh, you're you're going to fail that check. We got Ed does everything in Dallas. We got Missouri in the house with Underwood sketches. Uh, we have the 19th in Missouri as well. We've got Cookville, Tennessee with Gary. Misanthrop is in Mexico representing nice. We've got Lizzle in Oregon. Granite City, City, Illinois is in the house with John. We've got uh, April in Texas. Leesburg, Florida, the hollow. We've got Sedalia, Montana in the house with Darth, Darth Feek. <laughs> Albion, New York is in the house with Carl Maxson. I have way too much fun doing roll call, guys. It's, it's <laughs> illegal. Stillwater, Oklahoma. 
Is it Eldereth? We've got Oregon in the house with Mr. Rob's cleaning service. And Henderson, uh, Nevada in the house. Detroit, Michigan in the house. That was Gambit and the Biz, Biz Kenifer. <laughs> Oh man! So there's a lot of you figures in here today. There's like 80 people joining us, so that's pretty awesome. Wow, they've they've come out. That that's all. That that's like the other day when we we put we didn't even put Xanathar's Guide in the title this time. <laughs> there was no need. Yeah, th there was no need, and we summoned it's Ted. It's all Ted. It, it mm -hmm. could well be. They came for the yeah. came for the, uh, the, net the in chief, maybe. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we so, more Doug. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, for anyone joining us late, the flip through of Xanathar's Guide is up and over on the Nuraki channel where you're watching this video somewhere. So you guys can go check that out. And also there is the contest um for you to win the, the special edition cover or the regular cover. So we're gonna announce the winners for that. Uh, later in the month, I guess w the Saturday before, I guess, or the Saturday right around um, when when the books actually launch officially for the widespread release. And someone asked the slightly red versions of yeah, of yeah. Those, I remember, they keep saying that they're going to be slightly loved because we're giving away the books that we're giving to us. So we've been kind of like looking at them and reading them. Got nerdarchy DNA on it, man. It's a special, <laughs> special edition. I might, I may or may not sleep on my book. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at liberty to stuff. Cuddling up with Silgar <laughs> and uh, in it there. Yeah, yeah. So we are in New Jersey. I know someone had asked. I think it probably got answered a couple times too. I'm told. I'm told we have you know, or I'm told that I have a very thick New Jersey accent. Well, New Jersey know. has an accent. That's what it's, that's what <laughs> yes, yes, Ted. <laughs> it, it includes things like across and water. It's water, man. It's water. <laughs> bit of bing, bit of bing. Don't forget bit of about bang. the crick. <laughs> don't forget yeah. about the <laughs> And we don't have sprinkles. We have jimmies. Yeah. There's there's a lot of really? South. There's a lot of south in South Jersey. Jimmies, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ice cream. cream. Sprinkles is the sugar stuff that people put on. Well, you, you know what? Because of popular culture and stuff, people think the East North Jersey, well, it's basically like outside New York, is the New Jersey accent. And that's just like, oh, and that's just for the people who are outside New York that are New Jerseyans. What do you got? Do you have soda or pop or what do you call that? Soda. 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 Pop. What the fuck is pop? <laughs> that's what they call it in the Midwest. I, I actually never liked it. We went on a field trip to... And they called it soda. I was like, I like that. That sounds cooler than sodas. Or than Paps. I just started saying soda. That's what I call Ted's dad. <laughs> Pap. Yeah. I guess because it Paps with the combination. But yeah, I always thought that sounded stupid. Sounder says, so winning the books can allow us to clone clone our own Nuraki crew. Ooh, frightening. It just might be an amalgamation because our fingerprints are all over it. Oh, you no. You don't know who you're getting. You might get a mix. That sounds like a cool uh, a, a, a clone of all three of you in one person. Uh, I think that'd be scary. I might, if I run <laughs> the horse, it's, it's next year's Halloween. Uh, <laughs> so poison. Um, I call sparkling water soda. Interesting. Guys get weird over in Kuwait. Oh, Gary uh, so uh, Gary says, that's really cool. I lived in New Jersey for a good part of my life. Was in Tom Rivers and Red, Red Bank. Score. That's not very far from us. I've been to Red Bank. Red Bank, New Jersey? Yeah. yeah I, took a, I went to the Quick Stop and Kevin Smith's comic store and all that shit. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's stuff's up there. So mm -hmm. There's a good sushi place in Red Bank. I went there. It was good. <laughs> the, AJ Kenny is saying the Nerdarchy Chimera or Shimmer. Chimera? Chimera? Yeah. Well, that technically says Chimera. <laughs> not Chimera. He corrected well, himself. I know what he meant. So, uh, what are you gents up to this afternoon? I'm going to get some nerdarchy website stuff to do, and then including the marvelous file from Professor Bill before our game tonight. 
Yeah. Well, at some point in time, I at some point in time I have to uh, begin prepping. I've got three sessions between Thursday through Sunday to prepare for. What well, I'm uh, gonna be. Which other sessions do you have? No, uh, are... my, my my game is Saturday night. I've got the 40k winner Roger and his selected adventure in Chult uh, that I have to read up on and properly prepare for, and then uh, Teddy and his friends and the one dad are coming over Thursday afternoon. That I'll be running running a game for them then. Oh yeah, that's the one you got ripped in. So is that the dad you're always talking uh, the yeah. stuff with? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha, man. He threw out the the nerdarchy snare, and he really. <laughs> ah, it, it wasn't hard. Like, you know, you got you get somebody who's like, yeah, I, I play D and D with you know a bunch of kids, and I never get to play. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm trying to get a game for my kid in, and I just haven't been able to get my other nephews to, to together and plan something. I'm like, well, everybody's off this week. So maybe if I can schedule something during, you know, during the week, I give this guy a chance to actually play. I'll, I'll, I'll get Teddy actually playing the game, which he's eager to do. And, you know, we'll see what happens. So I'm excited about it. Nice. So I got yeah I guess we got the Marvel superheroes game tonight that'll be fun, and there's this rumor that there's fan art going around. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's a, it's someone put it on our Tumblr like we never do anything with Tumblr we just kind of send our stuff there. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go over there and take a look. There's just too much social media. And then Tuesday the Scarlet Sisterhood will return. Actually, I, before you know before coming on here I was trying to think I was like. What did I do with them last session? Because we took uh, Halloween off. Was I'm like, ah, did we do that thing? No, that wasn't it. Eventually, it came to me. That's why. That's why I have them do the recaps so that I know what <laughs> happened in the previous session. <laughs> <laughs> and well, then uh, doing it live. Poison uh, said that you know, you know, doesn't know what we're doing with Starfinder, but wants to know if we could do a, a live chat with the guys from Cosmic Crit. Sure, send them our way. No, absolutely. Um, if I can find them, or whatever. are they? Is that the podcast? That sounds familiar for some reason. But now nah, we're always open to talking to people doing things. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're not doing much with Starfinder, but that doesn't really matter. I don't mind talking about it. Uh, and then we have season two, session one of Savor Dice coming up Wednesday night, and that will be with Will Jones at the helm. We'll have Jim, Jim Davis, and Pruitt. From Web DM playing, I'll be playing. Cody will be playing, so it should be a lot of fun. And we, you know, we got the trailers out there for that. That looks cool. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's one of the part of what I was doing yesterday is actually making a character, and then then I'm hoping that I'll be able to import it from one campaign into the into the next. It should be okay. So we have a war going on in the chat between the lovers of Coke and the lovers of Pepsi. <laughs> and uh, apparently some of our admins are threatening to ban the other admins. <laughs> <laughs> so is that like a first strike situation? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hysterical. <laughs> it's escalated pretty fast in a few minutes. <laughs> I actually prefer... Um, I I didn't have a preference until they came out with Coke Zero. Agreed. Yeah, you know, Coke Zero is way better than Diet Pepsi. Um, and then before that, Dr. Pepper was better than either of them. And, and also, uh, I think Sprite was the first one to do Zero as well, which, you know, because neither of those really tasted like a diet soda. So I don't drink a lot of soda, um, but I will throw, throw my weight and support onto the uh, Pepsi and Mountain Dew side. I like cherry Pepsi. I just drink Grape Crush all the time. Only Grape Crush. Or Cherry I just like cherries, cherry soda. <laughs> I, I, New York the, yeah, I just don't actually all drink all that much soda. Well, it's getting pretty fierce. Pepsi is carbonated toilet water. Not my opinion. That's Shell and Door. Them's fighting where it's taking D20s out, guys. <laughs> it's getting fierce. <laughs> so someone did ask a serious question that wasn't Coke or Pepsi related, but um, oh, no, I can't find it. Hiya, dear. 
Hey, dear. I, I don't know. Uh, I can't find it now. He said something about creating, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it, lore. Would like you ever consider videos? doing one of our videos? Yes. And I know we've done some with our own, our own lore, with our campaigns where we're doing like the deities and kind of like the shape of the world and what's going on with it. But I think he means specifically lore videos like, uh, you know, the goddess of magic in X realm or something. Uh, correct us if uh, it's different than my interpretation. Or, or like, um, or like your your Wizards of Distinction series over on the. the oh uh, yeah, yeah, famous right. Wizards of Distinction. I don't know if this is lore. Oh, good. I, mean, I need to. Do I don't know if it's though. lore per se, but one of the writers just started a new series, and it's sort of lorey. It's called Flavor Shots. So they're just like short little lore. And with the minor mechanical things you can drop into your campaign. I don't know. You might be interested in that. There's a new one on there tip this morning. Uh, which writer is that? There's Drew Murray from the UK. He's actually the game master for our Star Trek game on Sundays, too. Oh, nice. But they're pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I thought they were fun things. And so we'll be, you know, parsing those out over the next few weeks, too. But it's pretty cool. How is, how is the Star Trek game going? How do you like the system? It's pretty good. Like, I, I, I don't know how to play for the most part. It's like they'll get devolved into like, well, no, like, you know, when you do something with the ship, you have to roll this. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just, I just show up to play. But uh, it's interesting. It's very cinematic and like a television show. And there's like scenes. I, I've barely played my character that I made up. I usually end up playing like other crew members because my guy's just not in the scene. So it's fun. I don't know. I'm, I, I like Star Trek, but I don't know all the lore. You know, when they're like, oh, no, the Gem Hadar attacked in this year. It's like, oh, okay. I don't know <laughs> when things happen. <laughs> I, sorry, I'm the same way in our Star, uh, Star Wars game. It's like, I've watched them, but I don't have, like, encyclopedic memory of all the species and all that. You mean you don't know all the episodes that include the Borg? Even just my mention? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> yeah, like one of the, something that happened yesterday. That you know, they're like, "Oh, this is like blah blah blah." It's like, okay, man, I didn't see that. I, sure. episode. I, I have a friend that has watched every incarnation of Star Trek, and mul multiple times. <laughs> like, you're such a nerd. TOS is the best man, Captain Kirk, best captain. Oh my god, it's so bad. Wait, you, you see, Kirk is the only stuff that I don't like. We're getting, going to get into another fight in the chat, just to let you guys know. <laughs> it's, it's, this is definitely fight. Come at me. Kirk's the best. I said it. So uh, Carl Maxim asked, uh, do you think Wizards Coats will make a book with new classes like Mystic and Artifice or no? I believe they will be uh, DM Guild's releases as well as the when they, revise, when they officially revise their Ranger. It's supposed to be a DM's Guild revision as well. So we will not be seeing those in their own, in books. On the plus side, you uh, we will get them for free. Uh, and I believe, you know, I believe they're going to also like they're gonna they're gonna be part of the um, adventure league legal as well. So that that that'll be cool once they get around to that. Has Ner Uncle Peter has Nerdy ever considered doing a twenty four hour for our live stream. I don't know. We have to, what are we going to talk about for 24 hours? We'd actually just have to play games or something. Could be a good way to start <laughs> off our Twitch Twitch stuff if we do that. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> we'll just stare at the screen for 24 hours. <laughs> well, I definitely couldn't talk for 24 hours, even if it was People just... People will pop on and be like, a quarter what's of the going time? on, guys? I don't know. They haven't moved in three hours. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know someone's wa someone will watch. <laughs> Well, it'll be talking with the people in the chat, pretty much. What what will will go towards? You, know, you also have to to look at the standard dy dynamics, where like there are times where the 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 people, you know, will co will come and go, and as Nate says, they're going to interact with with each other. So sometimes they're not even there to consume us. Like Ted, that's cannibalism. We Nernarchy does not advocate cannibalism. <laughs> Fraganator. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so I think I don't know. Some of you guys are talking about the artificer too. I'll be playing an artificer coming up soon. But uh, I had to change. Like I was going to do an alchemist artificer, and I'm like, I can't do it. I got to go with the gunsmith. Yeah. 
Jinker GM wants a 24-hour cook versus Pepsi debate. Yeah. <laughs> we get shut down think, immediately for uh, copyright. I don't think there would uh, I don't think there'd be a lot of lot of fun on that chat. This is not not a nerdy enough topic. Speaking oh, guys, too, sh- like I don't know if any of you guys have been following our um, our recovery day <laughs> series, but the Warlock video is up. But for whatever reason, it got stuck, and it went live. When, when it was supposed to, uh, Friday afternoon. But it, ne- it never ended up in the uploads for like two days later for the actual channel itself. And no one got notifications. As a matter of fact, someone commented and I'm going, hey, I saw this in my suggested video feed, but I did not get a notification. So if you guys are interested in that series, that book is up there. You can go check it out. Um, Speak, speaking of annoying things YouTube did, I can't believe they put my... Mud Wrestling Fay Lady video on Restricted View. What the heck is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've been dinging us with a lot of those lately. That's you ridiculous. Got mud, you got Mud Wrestling Ladies. What do you expect? Yeah, Mud Wrestling and Lady in a title. And they're like, I'm an algorithm bot, and I say that must be something that's age-restricted. I was like, well, no. <laughs> no yeah, well, they, they do it for things that has nothing in it, so it doesn't really matter. It seems like... It seems like you are like 75% more likely for that to happen on longer form content. Yeah. Well, I guess they found out that people were just like doing live chats or like long term, long videos and kind of like sticking different things in it um, to try and get around the you know title or whatever. But eh, I don't know. It's just kind of, I, f- I assumed it was just for the title, but I'm like, I don't, it's, you need to get to it. And it says they'll review it when it gets to a thousand views. And even on that, ch- our channel for a gameplay, a thousand views is not a guarantee for a while. So that's kind of irritating. Yeah. Well, yeah. So Bastards. that's my, that's my YouTube grip for the day. <laughs> Kyle asks, why do both artificers get a weird, get those weird pets? It should be a third subclass. I would be okay with that. I mean, definitely. I wouldn't mind having, you know, the construct subclass. Maybe they'll they, maybe yeah, they'll make they one and like augment that guy. Yeah, like if they all got it, but then there was a subclass that could do other things with it. Turn him into a transformer. Especially if you can make a super suit. <laughs> That'd be cool. What, Didn't uh, you talk about that in the live chat thing? What's that? I think somebody asked you about making it into like a suit or something. I think a, a few months ago, somebody asked him about that. Sounds very familiar. I think it, you know why it sounds familiar? Because in Starfinder, uh, the mechanic can take your drone oh, yeah. and put it on. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. You wear put it. it on your drone. So we are, we are past the hour mark, and we've got things to do, games to play, videos to, to render and upload. So I want to thank everyone for hanging out with us for this hour. It was cool to have so many people in the chat on a Monday afternoon. Thanks to you know the rest of the Nerdarchy crew for joining me today. So you don't have to just stare at me. I have to babble at you guys for an hour about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's much appreciated. And always, guys, until next time, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. As this thumbnail is both immaculate and inspiring. <laughs> I like it. I, I agree. It's a beautiful thing. I, I instead remember. of live chat, I should have put like Nerdock is Ted challenges you or something. <laughs> Am I challenging somebody to something? He Ted's like well, thumbnail, what thumbnail? He's, He's got a sword in the picture. picture I, so automatically anybody with a sword is welcome to challenge Ted to a duel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that yeah, as long like as you're not, you know. Go ahead, Dave. I said it looks like a very challenging pose. It's just like he's becking you guys to come at him. Come at me, bro. <laughs> so what's up, people? Did anybody play any games this weekend? This weekend was uh, quiet for me. Well, I had the, the game Friday night, uh, which okay. you know had all kinds of technical difficulties. And <laughs> Ted broke the interwebs. And I, had yeah, I, the good, I think the interwebs broke me. <laughs> <laughs> like, Interesting ending to that. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, I would say so. Uh, it was not was <laughs> did not go as originally planned. Does it ever though? Uncle Peter, <laughs> Evil Ted is medieval. 
Uh, I'm guessing you're using the, you know, me with my sword in front of the Nerdarchy banner. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you guessed it. <laughs> and uh, as opposed to being able to get stuff done, I went to a, uh, a kid's birthday party yesterday and got roped into running yet another game this month. <laughs> For kids? Uh, one adult and three kids. Oh, that's cool. So you're getting stuff done, man. Yeah. Making connections, family stuff. So my, my son will actually get his first D&D experience on Thursday. Oh, that's awesome. Score. And I played my uh, third game, third episode of The Hold of the Mora Danes, which is my pay-to-play game. It's going really well. The guys are liking it. So I played that this Saturday. How did that go? Oh, good, except I went over <laughs> until 11, like I always do. I always seem to go over. And um, You over-delivered. Well, it started, I, I accidentally deleted part of the second episode. So it started with us being like, well, sorry, guys, but I lost some of our stuff. And it was nice, like an hour worth of RP thing. So we just kind of like, just went through it really quick for 10 minutes and kind of attached that to the, the second episode instead. So it chopped it up a little bit, but. So I started bummed out, but the players are fine. <laughs> uh, sorry, 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 Mormon dude. His Pathfinder got game got canceled yesterday. Uh, Jason Jacob Stotes, do do you have uh, do you have a, uh, do have I do have a question. You guys have videos on it. How do you all prefer to start games or even just sessions or first sessions? Do we do any videos on that? <laughs> I'm probably I'm maybe <laughs> multiple ones. <laughs> we need Mike Gould to tell us. He's like seventeen times you've done that video. <laughs> we, like, we like to start off with a session zero. <laughs> Not always. Not we didn't always do that, but yeah, nowadays we do try and get session zero in. Well, that's how I prefer. Okay, he says prefer to start, and I actually prefer to start a campaign with us. Previously, two of them just can't use. So uh, the the bank of six, I think, is down to a bank of four. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and, three. That it, and, it's all it's all the part it's all the part of the life of being a YouTuber. And then, you know, with us having... Yeah, Nate W throws panties. <laughs> Bob, uh, he's, 20 do. He's the, he's the Tom Jones of YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, throw, we throw our panties at, at uh, Nate all the time, so... It's well, bad. Bob, 2-0-0, I, I appreciate your feelings, but I can't reciprocate with my own panties, so... <laughs> the wear them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I just got the the mental image of Nate's underwear flying through the air. I need to. I just, that's, my <laughs> that's in your. I was brain just now. thinking, man, that's a lot of underwear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening to this chat? <laughs> like, why did someone just throw a tablecloth? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Dude. Hey, my butt is not that that's big. <laughs> Nate's a big dude. Now he's throwing. He's throwing shade now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's getting so I better well, turn off the lights to show how appropriate it is. Uh, well, we do we do have the the unit of measure in FPN. So oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> fetal position Nates. Yeah, that that is true. So guys, it's if you got any questions that. you want to ask about us personally, about um, gaming, about YouTube, I know some people have messaged us about you you doing the YouTube. Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for Nerds by Nerds, and I'm hanging out with the crew today. We have uh, Nate the Nerdarch in the house, and Nerdarch is Ted, as well as the newly appointed and dubbed the Nerditor, Doug. Nerditor in chief. Nerditor in chief. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was chef. Nerditor in chef. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so today we're just hanging out, taking your questions. And uh, just talking about D and D and nerdy stuff. So apparently, uh, we're—I was just looking at a thing that says Matt Mercer is running a, a D and D Twitch thing. I was just telling these guys about it in New York on the 18th, which is really close to us. Except for we're supposed to be at PAX Unplugged that day. So that would be—that would be tricky. That would, uh, yeah. I'm changed. We we'll have to see. I have to look at the uh, when he's actually supposed to be running his thing. So what's up, people? Are you guys going to be hitting PAX Unplugged this year? It's the first one. You only get to go to the first one once. Indeed, and you know, like, you know, let it, let us know. You know, we're going to be at the Open Legend booth, so you'll be able to come hang out with us, talk some nerdy stuff. 
Oh, we got some brick New Jersey in the house, man. You're not too far from us. I used to do, I actually have done a lot of work uh, in brick when I was doing highway work. <laughs> they're, they're impromptuing doing a uh, roll call, sort of. <laughs> All that it takes is one person. <laughs> so we have a Jacob Stokes who says session zero. Yeah. If it's, a, if it's just a one shot, I like to know what characters are actually going to be playing in it so I can kind of customize it a little bit. Do you have any preferred ways that you actually start the game, though? Like, oh, thing, starting like or in a tavern. Or... Okay, so assuming session zero is started, I mean, well, there's the classic tavern, but normally I I would start it off with something that's going to be linked to the like main story arc that I'm going to run for at least the next five okay. or six sessions. I want to at least put something out there. They might not know anything how it's connected. But I start with putting something out there that's relevant. And then I might fill it up with like, oh, you want to go to the blacksmith shop and any little tiny things they want to explore the area with and then kind of draw them back. If it's like a long enough session, I'd like to draw them back towards the concept by having another encounter that's kind of linked to the, the main arc. Explosions. Well, we, all games should start with explosions. I like, the, I like that. We did a, uh, a video that we recorded this weekend, so it should be going up sometime this week, where we did a video talking about the consequences of not doing a session zero. Huh. I wonder, I can't even check. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder if that video is going up this week. <laughs> we definitely had some videos that we had to get out this week, so I don't know if that one made the cut or not, or if it got pushed to next week. Although the, the chances are pretty good that it did get go out this week because... The bank is low. Right. <laughs> well, we had a couple issues with some of the videos that we had recorded.